in the introduction here, we're already into. Okay, we're, look, my slides are up here. Uh, here's Rocket Headquarters, you haven't seen it before. Um, but th this is the story, we'll go through this again. Uh, I missed the, the story here. Um, anyway, the house, the Big Bad Wolf didn't, okay. We're into the rocket engine. Here's the rocket engine, we went to the moon on, the Saturn, the J2 engine. Here's what we spent a billion and a half dollars on, redeveloping this engine. The thing they did good was give us more operating pressure. That expansion nozzle doesn't give you any more ISP. Here's space shuttle mine engine, 454 seconds of specific impulse. Excess expansion nozzle, you can't use all that. Two thirds of that could be thrown away. Make a less expensive engine. Here is the RS-68 engine. We attempted to build a heavy lift vehicle with this inefficient rocket engine. Um, that it should not be used to return to the moon or venture to Mars. It's too inefficient. Then we have a kerosene fuel rocket engine, the size of it, you can see by the man here, has a very inefficient specific impulse. Um, and we'll talk about that. Uh, here's an advanced performance rocket engine that has 470 second specific impulse. That puts more payload in orbit at lesser cost and that will maintain the United States leadership in space. Um, here's the numbers. How much heat energy do we get? 43,000 BTUs for hydrogen, less than half of that for kerosene. That's why kerosene is not a good rocket fuel. And that's potential energy. You equate that potential energy of the heat to the kinetic energy, the rocket exhaust velocity gas, and then divide that velocity by gravity, Newton's famous gravity, and you get ISP in seconds, and I've plotted that all up. Here is the kerosene fuel, the Merlin engine down here, and you put you could have up there. This engine is dumping 80% of the kerosene into the atmosphere unused. Then here's for the hydrogen fuel engine, here's the IS-68, very poor, the J-2 and the SSM up here. Here's what you can get for an advanced performance rocket engine. Here's the misinformation that's in a book that we talked about earlier. And here's the cost of that. Here's your RS-68, the most expensive. Here's the least expensive and advanced performance rocket engine. Less fuel, a smaller tank, and less aerodynamic drag. Um, now, here's just a breakdown of what all the costs are per pound. The space shuttle as it is, with an advanced performance rocket engine, you see the improvement. You may not have heard of this, you like the Launch Alliance, but there's a vehicle out there that uses a space shuttle component. Um, so, advanced performance rocket engines put you into orbit, less money, uh, more, more payload for less money, maintains the United States leadership in space, and here's what we should be doing, a rational space policy, would develop these efficient engines before we build a heavy lift vehicle. And you would use a space shuttle, the perfect vehicle to demonstrate that, to put it in the number one engine location. Thank you very much. We'll go through that again to the little story at the front. Is that your five minute presentation? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, you have now, more time though. Yeah. With it's all that, it loses I wanted to say something about, uh, about, about advanced performance <laughs> rocket engines. I'll do with the guy before we're here. But any good ideas, we'll write them down. <laughs> Who, everybody's amazed by this presentation. Well, well, uh, can, can, can I help you a little bit here? Yes, go ahead. Help know me. about rocket engines and know what specific impulse is. Okay, good. Okay, quite because a few people don't, know what specific the ones who that's don't, important, but the, really the important. ones who don't might help if you gave them a tutorial about what it meant, what it measures, because that's really, he's talking about making an engine that has a higher specific impulse more thrust to weight ratio than the ones we make now. Ah, those two are not necessarily con connected. Yeah. Oh, yes, they are. Oh, yes, they are. I'm sorry. ISP, ISP burst, 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 burst. rocket engine yes. velocity. That's the exhaust gas is coming out. You divide that by Newton's famous gravity G, 32.2 feet per second per second, and that gives you ISP and its units are seconds, and that's key to the performance of a rocket engine a chemical fuel rocket engine.
So uh, your your uh, presentation here was based basically on getting more ISP, more miles per gallon out of your rocket. But the yes, exactly. The cost of fuel on the rocket is maybe 0.2 percent of the cost of the vehicle. So if you can reuse well, it, well, let me give you some numbers. Miles per gallon isn't that's very small, but it right? costs. Every time you fly in the space shuttle, it costs twenty-seven million dollars for the hydrogen you pump on board. No, that's not a small number. No, it does not. Yes, it does. I'm it's sorry. About, it's about two million. At huh? Most. It's about two million at most. I've looked at the bulk pricing of hydrogen. It's cheap. What about storage? And <laughs> it's it's like seventy-five, seventy-five, seventy-five to eighty dollars a gallon. Gina, what was our core for hydrogen per kilogram? Oh. Um, Pretty, pretty good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know if I'm allowed to say the numbers. Andrew's not in here, but you he's going to show me. Like a discount hydrogen dealer? <laughs> no, it's, no, it's, it's, it's legit. Oh, yeah, we have good used hydrogen. <laughs> 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 it was cheaper, cheaper volumetrically than we pay for gas well, for cars. For no, it's not cheaper. It's more expensive. It's 75 to $80 a no, gallon. No, okay. No, wait, right. it's not. The company, go the, to I'm sorry, it's 75 to $80 a gallon. That's not my idea. That's in Aviation Week. The guy right. wrote a letter to the editor and he said that's what the cost Let me Let me preface what I just said. This is a quote that my company got for our use of liquid hydrogen in our engine development program. We're not buying it in the quantities that NASA buys it, but we are getting charged less than volumetrically per gallon of hydrogen than you pay for gasoline for your car. Okay. What about losses? Your claim is that you can get hydrogen oil is very inexpensive. Is that what I said? You're saying the hydrogen fuel isn't expensive at all, it's very inexpensive. I'm it's, saying that the cost of it's, it's, it's the cost of a launch of launching something into space that really drives the cost of space in general. It's the launching the launch vehicle. Yeah, hydrogen engines get more ISP, but if SpaceX can launch a rocket with kerosene LOX engines uh, at half the cost per payload into Leo than a space shuttle, or better than that, then why does it matter that they only get 300 seconds of ISP on their engines? They're still getting the stuff where you want it for less money. Yeah. That's because ISP is everything. It's also uh, uh, so pressure. Sure. Okay, is, you're, you're saying the cost of fuel is down here, and I'm saying it's up here. Does it matter? I think the, I think the point is that, um, nevertheless, it doesn't matter. Even then, it doesn't matter what it costs. Um, exactly, because the costs fact is, right now, the, the space shuttle main engine right. is dumping. Uh, it only uses. It, it dumps overboard 25% of the hydrogen is unused. You're not getting any energy out of it. That's Can, I, can you run my slide? My well, well let, me, let, me, let me try to offer a different perspective. If I hear you two guys correctly, what I'm hearing is, is that you're arguing for the highest amount of lift capability per unit of mass in the vehicle based on your understanding of cost, where they're making the point that they don't care if the efficiency is quite as high as you'd like it to be as long as they can do it economically. Did I, did I carry it right? I think that's you can All right, that, that's three. pretty good. But I'd like to talk about that. That's good. Um, that's the crux of the discussion. We're talking about like so. heat energy determines rocket performance. Um, and um, we need a clearly defined space plan. We don't have one. And Congress telling NASA what to do, uh, build a heavy lift vehicle. That's not what we should be doing. Um, we agree there. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well, if, if NASA wanted to give you some money to help you develop yours, you wouldn't object, would you? But it's uh, not a heavy lift. That's right. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Okay, what, uh, what we'd like to, I'm trying to explain what I think a clearly defined space plan is and how to maintain the United States leadership in space. And I think what I'm saying is important to do that, and we're not doing it. Um, Here's a, big, here's a big bag wolf intimidating the three little rocket piggies with an advanced performance rocket engine. Now, you know the story about the three little piggies, right? Okay, so this is, I'm going to tell you this story. This is, this is rocket engine history of rocketry. And the first little pig bit his held out of paperback books, and it blew down because of the, this is a good book, but it blew down, the house blew down because of the misinformation that's in this rocket dime book. Notice it's my own copy. It has my name up there on the top. Uh, now, there's another rocket engine book, same thing, and it repeats this misinformation in there, and that house blows down. So then the little piggies ran to their, uh, where they, the third little piggy lived with his friends at NASA headquarters, 
And and the Wolf couldn't blow this house down because most of the NASA people believe the misinformation that's in those two books. So now we're up to where we started on this, but let's go on here. Uh, this rocket engine at 445 seconds, you see, this is the school of thought that says if you increase the expansion ratio, you'll get more ISP. You do not. The ISP is determined by the mixture ratio of the fuel and the oxygen. And the epsilon. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How much you can expand the gas gives you more exoplanets. No, the go back to the equation. Basic the yep. ISP of the engine is determined by the mixture ratio that you operate out. Nothing else, because it's not an expansion the, ratio. The chambers. Uh, C star is determined uh, uh, by mixture ratio. Yeah. And, and we spent a million, we spent a billion and a half dollars redeveloping this engine. I've worked on this engine. We went to the moon on this engine. We spent a billion and a half dollars to get the pressure increase from uh, 800 to 1200. That was an improvement, but th this expansion nozzle does nothing for you. Nothing for you. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry you do not, because you can only expand so far, and then you get to the to this. Well, there's, there's the obviously a law of diminishing returns where the added mass of expanded, like this massive, huge, you know, 10 foot long time. nozzle just isn't worth the extra performance gain. But, I mean, there is a trade off. There's there a trade off. And that's why you do optimization. You set up the no. winner optimization model, yeah, and it will tell you. And it depends if it is a ground or a There should be a sweet spot in a curve. Two thirds of this nozzle could be, expansion could be thrown away, and you'll still get the same performance out of this shuttle main engine. Why did they keep it then? Because they think the expansion is important and it's not. And then they tried to build a, 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 a heavy lift vehicle with this inefficient rocket engine. It's a throwaway vehicle for the Air Force to use in their expendable launch vehicles, and it's inappropriate to use. And the same thing with this engine because they're operating at such a 323 seconds, they throw 80% of the kerosene. Overboard, unused, that's a big oil spill in the sky. That's what it is, kerosene dumped into the atmosphere. Now this engine, in 470 seconds, hydrogen and oxygen, you can get 470 seconds impulse. This is the engine that, that this is what our uh, uh, space technology should be doing. This is what the government should be, this is what the, this is what the uh, Congress should be telling NASA to do, yeah. and NASA should be telling Congress, we don't want to build a heavy lift vehicle, we should be building this first, before we build a heavy lift vehicle. What's the engine cycle? Yeah, what's the combustion? I don't think you heard me. Um, Is the engine cycle staged combustion? What's driving the, the pumps? Oh, How thank you. Driven? You bleed, you bleed the, you notice, you bleed the hydrogen off here, and you burn it here, and you use that energy to um, to drive these turbines here. That's okay. and then the now, that, that's typical for all rocket engines. J2 does it, SSME does it, RS-68 all do the same thing. And that's why this, without, if you didn't use that energy, some of that energy to drive these turbines, you'd get 481 seconds here. Okay, I see you're doing that. The difference between 481 and 470 is the amount of energy you use to drive the turbines. And this is an exp inexpensive engine to build. You don't have a, like on the space shuttle main engine, you have integrated turbo pump combinations, proprietary, very complex, very expensive. Here, you buy a turbine and you buy a, a cryogenic pump and you put them through a, drive them through a gearbox. Well, they're all components. Fine bill. Now you have to have a, a higher tank temperature than that. Now you have to have a higher temperature. That's the problem with it. You need a high temperature combustion chamber. And a high pressure. It operates at a higher pressure, 3,300. Yes, high. In that Just a question. This, this, this device has never been built, correct? I'm sorry. My hearing is very bad. I don't it's have my never hearing. It's been built, anything. correct? This is just a proposal, not an actual. Uh, has this device this engine built? does not exist except in my mind. Okay, this is my design for an advanced performance rocket engine. Can, can I can I ask that's, you one? That's what I, Gentech is advocating for. Let me ask you one question. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Pretty loud. 
Um, do you have an idea of what materials that would be made of? You don't have to divulge what they are, but... Uh, yes, I know, I, know, I know what materials to use for this combustion chamber. I'll keep that secret right now. <laughs> um, I'll talk to you in private about that. Can, can you explain to a, a, um, a, as to a novice um, what specific improvements this design has over, say, the J2, as an example? Well, what, what, what is this special sauce that brings the, the impulse to that level? Because we're not, I'm looking at a very high-level diagram here, and I'm not quite... Yes, let, let's talk about it in relation to the space shuttle main engines. Okay. I think that's a better comparison. The space shuttle main engine has four, four turbine pump combinations, proprietary turbine pump combinations. Two for the hydrogen and two for the oxygen. So that's four turbo pump combinations. This is less expensive because it only has two. And they're not integrated. You buy a cryogenic pump for the hydrogen, a cryogenic pump for the oxygen, and you drive that through a gearbox that's connected to these pumps. That's simple to do. That's how we know how to do build this technology. Now, you're, you're, the question is, what's the difference between this and the SME? The SME operates at a mixture ratio of six to one. Now, you remember your high school chemistry what does oxygen and hydrogen combine to form water and mixture ratio of what? Eight to, eight to one. Remember your high school chemistry? Yeah. Eight to one. Oxygen to hydrogen. And so this operates in a mixture ratio of eight to one. That's why you get this higher specific impulse. The space shuttle op engine operates in a mixture ratio of six to one it's a lot of that six to one means a lot of excess hydrogen being dumped overboard unused it's wasting fuel but isn't the benefit of spitting the hydrogen out in that it has a smaller molecular weight therefore it is as small it is less degrees of freedom etc like it is more energetic therefore no the hydrogen has the same 43,000 british thermal units of energy per pound of hydrogen that combines with oxygen. If it doesn't combine with oxygen, you get no energy out of it. But it improves the molecular characteristics of the exhaust when you get better ISP that way. When you go through the calculations, your best ISP is at a mixture ratio of about four. I'm but sorry, I'm sorry. that's the fallacy. Thank I'm you. That's the fallacy that's in those two books. That's what it says in that first book I showed you, and that's have what it says in the second book I showed you, and sorry. it's wrong. But I'm sorry I'm going to have to cut in, but I love it. time's over. Time to move back and figure out the next uh, the next uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it.